Welcome to the League of Nerds comic book segment number 135. I'm John Cooney here to talk to you about comics released the 20th of August 2014, beginning as usual with my first five, meaning these are the first five books I intend to read this week, and I'll give you a little more depth on them, starting with at number one, Batman and Robin number 34. Batman's quest for Damien's body is about to take him further down the road to damnation than he's ever gone before. His first stop, the Justice League's Lex Luthor? Series writer Peter Tomasi told Comic Vine about Batman's new suit at San Diego Comic Con. Now in issue 33 we saw a big, huge bat suit. Are, are we going to get to see more of that throughout the story? Yeah, the hell bat suit. It's, uh, it's pretty cool. It's, it was a nice little bit where we wanted to kind of really show that you know, Batman and the League really addressing Batman's humanity where, you know, he's not a god, like, you know, he's not Aquaman, he's not Wonder Woman, so he's going to need, he's not Superman, GL, Flash, he needs a little extra help in terms of just physicality and protecting himself. So this suit is not just like a, an armor, a knight, a knight's armor, we'll see it sort of have some really cool special effects, so to speak, that we'll, uh, we'll get to see in the upcoming issues. At number two, we've got all new X Factor number 12. Servo holds an X Factor press conference. Everything should be fine. It's not like any of the members have secrets, right? Series writer Peter David described Servo Industry CEO Harrison Snow, quote, I feel safe in saying that Snow is not what he appears to be, except we don't know what he appears to be. Sometimes he seems very concerned about the team. Other times we see him screwing around on his wife. And I think that's what makes him an interesting character. He would have been the last person you'd expect to come in and save the day, and yet that's exactly what he did. But now you're left wondering how the hell he did that, and if he was sinister in doing so, which is precisely what I want you to wonder. Close quote. He went on to say, quote, Matters will culminate in Serval's first press conference to promote the team, which of course will go horribly wrong. Close quote. And number three, we've got Multiversity number one. The biggest adventure in DC's history is here. Join visionary writer Grant Morrison, today's most talented artist, and a cast of unforgettable characters from 52 alternate Earths of the known DC multiverse. Prepare to meet the Vampire League of Earth-43, the Justice Riders of Earth-18, Super Demon, Doc Fate, and the Super Sons of Superman and Batman, the Rampaging Retaliators of Earth-8, the Atomic Knights of Justice, Dino Cop, Sister Miracle, Lady Quark, the Legion of Savannas, the Nazi New Reichsmen of Earth-10, and the latest, greatest superhero of Earth Prime, you comprising six complete adventures, each set in a different parallel universe, plus a two-part framing story and a comprehensive guidebook to the many worlds of the multiverse. The Multiversity is more than just a multi-part comic book series. It's a cosmos-spanning, soul-shaking experience that puts you on the front line in the battle for all creation against the demonic destroyers known as the Gentry. In issue number one, penciled by superstar artist Ivan Rice, President Superman of Earth-23 uncovers a threat to all reality so apocalyptic it will take a team of incredible heroes from across the multiverse to face it, including Captain Carrot, like you've never seen him before. But even with a multitude of alternate worlds to choose from, where every variation is possible, can anyone hope to prevail against the onslaught of ultimate evil and undying hatred in the unstoppable form of a one-time cosmic defender with unimaginable powers? Join us, if you dare, for the beginning of the multiversity. Series writer Grant Morrison explained Multiversity's concept to Wired Magazine, quote, When I was writing Batman, I found that if I tried to rationalize Adam West's Batman in the context of Frank Miller's Batman, suddenly you'd get a more dynamic character who at one time in his life was kind of offbeat and crazy, but two years later he's kind of angry and angsty. The character himself became more real when you added all the contradictory versions. It's what makes us real. We all have different faces that we show to different people in our lives. And the only way to understand you or me is to see all of them at once, all the contending versions of ourselves. In Multiversity, I wanted to do that for the entire DC Universe. Close quote. At number four, we've got the Fade Out number one. The first project from their groundbreaking five-year deal at Image will have Brubaker and Phillips fans, old and new, at the edge of their seats, as they weave an epic crime story unlike anything they've done before. Hollywood, 1948, a noir film stuck in endless reshoots, a writer played with nightmares from the war on a dangerous secret, an up-and-coming starlet's suspicious death, and a maniacal studio mogul with his security chief who will do anything to keep the cameras rolling before the post-war boom days come crashing down. The fade-out is the most ambitious series yet from the award-winning noir masters, 
Bonus, this 40-page first issue features more story pages as well as exclusive back page articles that are only available in these single issues. Series writer Ed Brubaker shared his reasons for the new series. Quote, Just following my instincts, really. After two and a half years working on Fatal, I felt like doing something more grounded and real, but still that played to our strengths. I thought a period piece noir story would keep pushing us to work harder and be different than anything else on the stands right now. It was actually between this and a sci-fi idea, and after seeing so many sci-fi comics announced the last month, I'm glad we went in this direction. Close quote. When asked if there was anything he'd like to add for readers, Brubaker responded, quote, I never know how to answer that question. Kirkman would tell me to remind them that it's like Madman, but with more sex and murder. But that seems crass. Close quote. At number five, we've got Daredevil number seven, Original Sin tie-in, The Man Without Fear Braves the Wilds of Wakanda, and the truth behind Matt's mother's greatest sin is finally revealed. Series writer Mark Wade provided more details on a panel at San Diego Comic-Con, Quote, the reason why Jack had to bring up Matt alone, why his mom left, why his mother left and never saw him again until he was an adult, when he goes to confront, he finds her in prison, being extradited to Wakanda, the beginning of the story. Matt fighting a bunch of Wakandan warriors next issue, I can't say anything, some good, solid research, and an important story. Close quote. Referring to issue 7 specifically, Wade said, quote, My goal on Daredevil is to make him do something in every issue that would make Green Lantern pass out in fear, close quote, as they showed pages from number 7 featuring him skydiving. Rounding out the top 10, at number 6 we've got Elektra number 5. The critically acclaimed and captivating story of Elektra's search for redemption reaches a bloody climax. Legendary assassins go head-to-head -head at the edge of the world, but it looks like Elektra's soul is right at death's door. At number 7, we've got Nova number 20, Original Sin tie-in, guest starring Rocket Raccoon. The secrets of the Black Novas and Sam Alexander's dad have been revealed. Sam's world is torn apart, but can he come out of this stronger? At number 8, we've got Dark Horse Presents number 1, Jeff Darrow and Frank Miller's Big Guy and Rusty the Robot returns in this new volume of the award-winning, long-running anthology powerhouse Dark Horse Presents. Also in the 48-page tome of Awesome Comics, Peter Hogan and Steve Parkhouse's Resident Alien, Brendan McCarthy's Dream Gang, Jimmy Palmiotti, Justin Gray, and Andy Coon's Wrestling with Demons, Damon Gentry and Aaron Conley's Sabretooth Swordsman, and David Mack's Kabuki. At number 9, we've got Ms. Marvel number 7, It's Wolverine. Kamala may be fangirling out when her favorite, okay, maybe top five, superhero shows up for some help, but that won't stop her from protecting her hometown. Who is the inventor and what does he want with Kamala and all her friends? Maybe Wolby can be of some help. If you're not reading Ms. Marvel, you're missing out on the best series out there, says almost everybody. And at number 10, we've got New Avengers number 23, Of All That We Once Were. We follow the members of the now broken Illuminati through their last day on Earth. For the best of the rest, from DC Comics, we've got Batman Eternal number 20. James Gordon takes on Falcone's army from inside Blackgate. Next, we have Sensational Comics featuring Wonder Woman number 1, Diana Prince, Amazon Warrior, Ambassador of Man's World, or Champion of Women in Need, all of the above. This digital first anthology series will bring some of comics' greatest talents to Themyscira and give them leave to explore Diana, her world, and ours. Gail Simone and Ethan Van Skyver kick things off when Oracle calls for help after the entire Bat family gets sidelined, but when Wonder Woman steps into the breach, Gotham City's criminals get the surprise of their lives. Then Amanda Daybert and Kat Staggs take Diana to school, where she meets her biggest fan. We've also got Supergirl number 34, a Superman doomed tie-in. Kara must deal with the fallout of the green kryptonite skies over a dead Earth, and the horrors still to come. And we've got Teen Titans number 2. Now the new hotness on social media, the Titans try to control their own images as the new threat continues to grow around the team. Meanwhile, Star Labs takes an interest in DC's teen heroes. From Marvel Comics, we've got all-new Ghost Rider number 6, Legend. Ghost Rider has become a local hero. Can Robbie Reyes resist the call of street racing? Who is the mysterious figure who takes an interest in the new Ghost Rider? Next, we have all-new Ultimates number 6, the climactic conclusion of Power for Power, the Ultimates battle with the Serpent Skulls. Fever pitch violence drives this war between the classes and sexes. Diamondback breaks hearts and faces. Scourge goes out in a blaze of glory. Crossbones fights to the bitter end. Will the team quit while they're ahead, or will they emerge as something even stronger? We've also got Magneto number 8, 
Magneto was once arguably the most powerful mutant on the planet, but after his latest tenure with the X-Men, his powers have been reduced to a whisper of what they once were. Maddened by the fact that he struggles to safeguard mutant kind in uncertain times, yet his own mutant gift wavers, to what lengths will Magneto go to become the master of magnetism once more? Next, we have Mighty Avengers number 13. Unlucky for some, the moon is full, the sacrifice is ready, and the Death Walkers are about to end humanity as we know it. The Mighty Avengers get a new member, but is that enough to stop the four who rule attaining godhood, or is it already too late to save the Earth? We also have Storm number 2. Storm is on a mission to use her extraordinary powers for betterment of not just mutant kind, but the entire world. When wayward youth start disappearing from the streets of New York, Storm is reminded of her own past as a thief and decides to investigate. But little does she suspect that the culprit behind the disappearances is one of her oldest foes, Callisto. And we've got Wolverine Annual number 1, One Month to Die, A Little Father, Adoptive Daughter, Adoptive Daughter's Son Time, Now that's a mouthful. Wolverine and Jubilee take Shogo on a camping trip. Hey, it's a Wolverine story in the middle of the wilderness. What could go wrong? From Dynamite Entertainment, we've got Dr. Spectre, Master of the Occult number 3. Mark Wade and Neil Edwards bring the Gold Key universe closer to unlocking. Why is a Master of the Occult forced to deal with a robot fighter, a dinosaur hunter, and a man of the atom? Next, we have Justice Inc. number 1 of 6. An airliner vanishes en route without a trace. It's the crisis that brings together, in a historic team-up for the first time ever, Street and Smith superstar Trinity, The Shadow, Doc Savage, The Avenger. This historic crossover is 75 years in the making. Justice Inc. begins here, spawned by a horrific tragedy of death and destruction secretly orchestrated by some of the most powerful and unexpected villains in the history of the Pulps. Chapter 1 of 6, The Time Machine. And we've got Steampunk Battlestar Galactica 1880 number 1 of 4. Welcome to the world of Battlestar Galactica as never seen before, as number 1 New York Times bestselling author Tony Lee gives it a steampunk spin. After Professor Baltar's clockwork cyclonics destroy the colonial empire, Archduke Adama learns that his son Apollo is missing. It's up to Lady Athena to travel to the sky pirate world of the rising star and ask for help from the only hope she has, the disgraced Captain Starbuck and his humanoid Daggett co-pilot Muffet. From Image Comics, we've got Genius number 3 of 5, Genius issues 1 through 5 weekly through August. The winner of Top Cow's pilot season makes its triumphant return to print. What if the greatest military mind in our generation was born to a people who are already supremely conditioned to wage war, who know nothing but violence since birth, and must continually adapt to new predators in order to survive? What if the second coming of Alexander the Great, of Genghis Khan, of Napoleon, of Patton, What if it was a teenage girl from South Central L.A. named Destiny? And what if she decides to secede three blocks of the hood from the Union? Who's going to take it back from her and her army of gangbangers? Who can? From writer Mark Bernadine and Adam Freeman and rising star artist Afua Richardson comes a hiring, action-packed tale of a city that declares war on a brilliant young woman pushed to the edge. And we've got Peter Panzerfaust number 20, The Hunt, Part 5. When revenge is at the tip of a finger, a finger on a trigger, there's only one thing that stands in Lily's way. The fate of the entire French resistance lies in Lily's hand and one bullet could change history. From Valiant Entertainment, we've got Armor Hunter's Bloodshot number 2 of 3, Massacre and Marrow, something deadly has escaped and is running loose in the underbelly of America's classified military extraterrestrial reconnaissance outpost. With all hands on deck dealing with the fallout of the Armor Hunter's attack, it's down to Bloodshot and Marrow's number 1 officer, Colonel Jamie Capshaw, to stop the alien menace only known as Malgum. Spoilers on, not everyone is going to get out of this in one piece. And we've got Armor Hunters Harbinger number 2 of 3, under siege and out of control. The Armor Hunters have decimated a major metropolis, and the battle to save the survivors still rages. In the midst of the devastation, the volatile team of Harbinger Foundation escapees called Generation Zero are about to stumble headlong into an insidious alien counteroffensive, one with the potential to bring down not just a city, but the entire world. When push comes to shove, can this group of immensely powerful, immensely temperamental teenagers be trusted to repel the Armor Hunter's second wave? Absolutely not, but they're the only chance we've got. 
Out in trades this week, we've got Journey into Mystery by Kieran Gillen, the Complete Collection Volume 2 trade paperback, A Forgotten Hero Returns, But Will the Truth Behind His Exile Consume the World? Only the New Mutants Can Help Young Loki Now. Then Civil War Breaks Out Among the British Manchester Gods. But even with Loki's aid, can Merlin, King Arthur, and Captain Britain prevail? And what does Hela want with the Holy Grail? Meanwhile, Thor is caught in an eternal game between cosmic entities, and when the cursed veneer return and declare war on Asgardia, Suter's fire rages across the nine worlds. A desperate Loki journeys to the heart of Suter's fiery kingdom, but Loki's future and past collide when Thor becomes trapped in the underworld, and the truth about young Loki is finally revealed. Collecting Exiled number 1, New Mutants number 42 and 43, Journey into Mystery number 637 to 645, and The Mighty Thor 18 through 22 and Annual number 1. And we've got Loki, Agent of Asgard, Volume 1, Trust Me, Trade Paperback. Kid Loki's all grown up, and the god of mischief is stronger, smarter, sexier, and just plain sneakier than ever before. As Asgardia's one-man secret service, he's ready to lie, cheat, steal, bluff, and snog his way through the twistiest, turniest, and most treacherous missions the All-Mother can throw at him starting with his heart-stopping heist on Avengers Tower. And that's just the beginning as Loki takes on Lorelai in Monte Carlo's casinos and heads back to the dawn of Asgard to join its greatest heroes on a quest for certain magical sword. But when he puts together a crew to crack the deepest dungeons of Asgardia itself, there may be one plot twist too many for even Loki to handle. Collecting Loki, Agent of Asgard, number 1 through 5, and material from all-new Marvel Now, point one, number 1. Okay, so that's just a few of my favorite books out this week. There's still plenty of others available, and I broke out all the Marvel titles this week in their own video, as well as a separate video for all of DC, and even a video with the top independent publishers. You can find them all on my YouTube channel at he's got issues.com. And we'll also have links up on the League of Nerds.com, our Facebook page, so be sure to like us there too. And of course, you can follow everything I'm reading on Facebook, Pinterest, Tumblr, or Twitter. You can find links to everything in the About section at he's got issues.com. And a reminder that both He's Got Issues and the League of Nerds are proud members of the Comics Podcast Network. So until next week, I'm John Cooney, and I've got issues.